Hi, this is Avikshit Bhushan. I work as the Vice President for uh, Aerospike in Asia Pacific in Japan. I've been with Aerospike for around seven years and over the last seven years I've been solving a lot of real-world problems for enterprises and startups alike all over Asia Pac in Japan. The reason why um, Aerospike has been doing very well in, in India is because by its very nature over the last couple of years we've had a lot of adoption by nature in, in markets like India from a digital perspective. You look at the use cases like uh, what happened in COVID, you look at the UPI story, you look at the digital payment story, you look at the fast tag story, everywhere digital adoption has exploded. And one of the reasons that's happening is because more and more people are online and they're, expe they're, they're expecting that these platforms can give the same level ex of, of performance that they get out of the, the alternate platforms. So what is happening from a banking sector perspective or telco perspective or even in the startup sector is they're looking at how do I keep these platforms running 24 by 7 by 365. These platforms cannot go down. So the resilience becomes very critical. The second part of it is how quickly can I get access to the data? So if somebody is running a platform right now which is customer facing, it better run very, very quickly. So if I open my app, I should be able to get access to the information right away. So one of the largest telcos in India, they've been using Aerospike for a while now. As soon as you open their app, you get data related to what is relevant to you. So that's one of the critical things that customers require. The second thing is, given the nature of the market in India, you look at the telco sector, for example, it's the lowest ARPU in the world, which means that the cost of doing business should be extremely low. So a platform like Aerospike that helps you save costs in terms of costs because the hardware footprint goes down becomes another very interesting part of what Aerospike offers. And lastly, when you look at the Aerospike story, one of the key things that you see is, okay, you've got scale, you've got things that matter, but are you able to give things like what RBA was expecting for the banking sector? You can't have any downtime. It has to run 365 days a, a year and all the time. So what happens with Aerospike is, you can run these clusters across data centers with zero downtime. A node can go down, a rack can go down, a data center can go down, but never do you have downtime of your platform. So essentially what it means is the customer experience like I talked about is very, very high. So these are some of the reasons why Aerospike's adoption in, in, in India especially has been really, really huge over, over the last few years. What has happened in the, in the banking sector in India is all of a sudden with, the, with a lot of these payment wallets and, and payment gateways that have come up, which are now ubiquitous, people are using it all over the place, like the, the phone base of the world, Paytms of the world, now it is becoming relevant for the banking sector to cope up and build those kind of applications where customers start getting the same levels of experience as they would get with say a UPI or some of these um, you know, digital first organizations. So the banking sector especially when they're looking at Aerospike, they're looking at one, revamping their mobile banking infrastructure or net banking infrastructure. And secondly, how do you augment your existing UPI infrastructure with something which can run 24 bar 7? That's another use case where Aerospike is, very, is getting a lot of traction. Thirdly, we're also seeing a lot of adoption where fraud, I mean in India, fraud by itself is low because you have two-factor authentication. But regardless, fraud is a, is, a, is a problem for here, I mean for, for all of us, right? Given that more and more people are online, how do you prevent fraud as it happens? And Aerospike has been very, very popular in, in companies like PayPal, where essentially what Aerospike did was it brought down the risk that, that PayPal had before they had Aerospike to what they have today with Aerospike. I mean, in fact, before Aerospike was there with PayPal, they had $5 million at risk from a, from a fraud perspective, which went down to $0.17 million after they moved over to Aerospike. And the reason they could do that is because the latency is so very, very low with Aerospike you can get things done where you always have uh, you know, transactions happening within the SLA limit specified. And there are many other use cases. I mean, talk about use cases, then digital identity becomes very important. The common theme across all these use cases is scale. You want to make sure in a market like India, I and mean, I didn't talk about scale in the first question that was asked, but really scale is very critical, right? You look at how it's happened in India, all of a sudden people are online and more and more people are getting um, you know, online with these platforms. So what is happening is the explosion of data for platforms that are working well. So from the point when a company starts, to the point when it becomes popular, very quickly there's explosion of data. You look at Dream11, for example. Dream11 has been using Aerospike for a while. And what has happened there is, all of a sudden when Dream11 became popular in the IPL space, there was explosion of data for Dream11. And one of the reasons they're able to do that, especially in the mission critical application called the Team Service, is because Aerospike was running as part of the platform. So just to give you a sense, in the banking space, fraud, customer 360, so one view of the customer across all lines of business. Um, the third one was user profile data. Uh, recommendation engines, payment uh, applications, those are some of the very popular applications where Aerospike is deployed. One of the things that uh, all of us are familiar with with relational systems is they work great to certain amount of scale. In fact, if you have a system that doesn't grow too much, if it's a system where you want absolute consistency of data, you can't compromise on, on the data that you have, and you're pretty sure that 
beyond a certain point, the, the variance in data is not going to be very high. In fact, the, the, the flexibility of data is something you're not looking for. Then, then the relation system works great. But the challenge with relation systems is more often than not in today's world, you have explosion of data. You should be able to cater to scale. You should be able to cater to a case where you can't have any kind of a downtime of the platform. At the same time, you can't compromise on consistency of data. And also, when you have these kind of platforms, you're talking about, do I have a, you know, a model which works from a costing perspective? You can't, you can't deploy a large uh, database uh, you know, infrastructure or engineered system where the cost is very, very high. The cost has to be optimized as well. And sometimes, customers also require these platforms to run across data centers, or it should be distributed across geography. Some of them might say, I want a data center in Mumbai, another data center in Bangalore, and so on. Your platform should be able to handle that kind of distributed data. And you might also want to uh, handle data like which is geospatial in nature, meaning based on the location of the, of the customer, you want to offer something that's relevant for the user. So the kind of use cases that we are seeing in today's environment are getting more and more nuanced. So a relational system by, very, by its very nature, while it works great, beyond a certain point, it has certain limitations in, in terms of what it can do. And that's when alternate platforms start becoming relevant. Now there are two options that you have. You have one option where you can go for a DRAM-based system, which works great for a small amount of data. Or the other option is to go for an SSD optimized option, which can work at scale. Now, Aerospike works by nature in an SSD optimized way. Whereas a lot of other caching platforms, for example, they work great when it's in an in, in memory kind of a fashion. So if you're looking at scale, if you're looking at performance, if you're looking at a geographic distributed platform at a very low cost, and which, which has to be resilient across data center failures and so on, Aerospike is a platform that you would like to choose. And that's where when customers are looking at platforms, I would look at, do I have these kind of problems emerging? And if, if there is, you probably want to look at Aerospec at get go. Because after you, and this is something very very common in database space, that if you invest in a particular database technology, to booing out of that is always a challenge. So you want to make sure that at the outset, you choose the right platform to use. So that as you move forward, you don't have to keep on changing the platform that you have. Mm -hmm.